Live from WTKR News 3, your news at 6 starts right now. A bus crash kills four college kids and injures over 40 others. We'll tell you what investigators are now saying is the cause. After a week of wet weather, is there a chance for some sunshine this weekend? Good evening and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Todd Carrillo. We begin with new details tonight. A blown tire is what officials say caused a charter bus to crash Saturday, killing four people on board. 42 others were injured and taken to the hospital, eight in critical condition. It happened just after 2.30 Saturday afternoon on North Carolina Interstate 74. The front driver's side tire blew out, causing the bus to veer off the road, hitting a guardrail. Traffic was blocked in both directions for hours. The charter bus was carrying a group of college students on their way to a football game in Fayetteville. This is probably one of the, the most uh, tragic accidents because uh, I put it in this context, you have young people. Well, some of us made it, some of us didn't, but I mean, hopefully we get through it and thank God some of us seen another day and I just pray for the families that that's going through hard times right now. The students on that bus all attend a junior college in South Carolina. Taking a live look over the Virginia Beach oceanfront, we finally have some clear skies today. But the big question, will the sun last through the weekend? Meteorologist April Loveland is here with that answer. Just in, Chesapeake police are investigating an armed robbery at the Dunkin' Donuts on Western Branch Boulevard. It happened a little after 9 p.m. Police tell News 3 the suspect held up the store with a handgun, got an unknown amount of cash from the register, and then ran away. Units are still on scene, and canine units are currently doing a sweep of the area. No one was injured. A man is in critical condition after being shot on Timothy Avenue near Doors Drive in Norfolk. Police say the shooting took place at an apartment complex just before 8. Medics transported the victim to Sentara Norfolk General Hospital. Police say his injuries are life-threatening. Detectives are still on scene canvassing the area for witnesses. If you have any information about what happened, call the crime line at one 888 lock you up. A business caught on fire today in Norfolk. It took more than two dozen firefighters 30 minutes to get it under control. It happened on Springfield Avenue, near Sycamore Street this morning. It was located in a wall at the rear of the building. Firefighters were able to open the wall and contain the fire to that one section. According to officials, the fire was started by workers on scene performing welding. They say the building is a disposal facility and a spark caught a buildup of trash on fire. No one was hurt. The hot zone was robbed this afternoon on Airline Boulevard in Portsmouth. The call came into police just after 4 p.m. Authorities say two men armed with guns demanded money from an employee. The employee complied and the two men then took off. No one was hurt. A woman is hurt after her home went up in flames in Chesapeake today. It happened on Redbrook Avenue and Lloyd Drive just before 1 p.m. Firefighters quickly put out that fire, but the home is no longer livable. Medics transported the woman on scene for minor burns, and they tell us she will be staying with family. Three people are in the hospital after a crash on Virginia Beach Boulevard this morning. It happened just before 9.30. Police say two trucks crashed into each other head-on between West Lane and First Colonial Road when one truck crossed over a double line. Crews took the suspect driver to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The driver and passenger of the other truck are at the hospital and are expected to be okay. The road was closed but has since reopened. That crash is still under investigation. News 3 has new details tonight about a robbery in Hampton. Police say Nathan Caleb Schlosser Goodson was arrested after robbing a man at gunpoint on Settler's Landing Road. The victim was sitting in his car while the suspects approached him and demanded money. As the suspects tried to get away, the victim ran into the back of their car. The suspects fled on foot before police could arrive. Jawan Meme Andre has been identified as the second suspect in that robbery. Andre is con currently has warrants out for robbery and use of a firearm in commission of a felony. If you have any information on his whereabouts, call the crime line at one 888 lock you up Two people were rescued after their boat nearly sank near the Chesapeake Bay Bridge tunnel this morning. The two people were on board and able to get off the boat before it partially submerged. It happened near the third island of the Bay Bridge Tunnel around 9.30 this morning. Emergency crews found the people sitting on the rocks on the third island and took them to Little Creek. The boat was then towed away. It's unclear what caused that boat to submerge. 
The Suffolk Public Library celebrated its pre-4th of July picnic today. This is the library's first year holding the event. The inspiration was to bring together families in the community. There was food catered by local Suffolk vendors and activities for the kids. So we have games, we have arts and crafts, and just giving families a real opportunity to sit down and uh, be together, especially if we weren't able to travel this weekend. and gives um, them an opportunity just to kind of hang out, a um, real sense of community. Organizers also showed off the new library to go. They call it the Bookmobile, but it is so much more than books, including technology like iPads and even a 3D printer. Today was the final day of the Chesapeake Children's Today and Leaders Tomorrow Star Football Camp. The seventh annual three-day camp wrapped up with a family cookout, playoff games, and a final championship game. More than 160 boys and girls were able to participate for free. The camp runs completely by volunteers. This year they had special appearances by Lyndon Trail, linebacker for the Washington Redskins, and Don Carey of the Detroit Lions, plus coaches from local middle and high schools and players from Norfolk State. Their goal? To teach children football skills, team building, and leadership while giving them a positive view of local police. Chesapeake Sheriff Jim O'Sullivan started the camp to give young boys and girls opportunities to build a bridge to a stronger future. A heads up for kids in Newport News. Be on the lookout for pop-up playgrounds coming to your neighborhood. It's all thanks to Dominion Virginia Power. $50,000 has been donated to Newport News Police and PALS program. It funds mobile playgrounds for kids. The program wants to give children a chance to build relationships with Newport News Police and offer opportunities to kids who live in neighborhoods that lack recreational resources. If you can't afford a vacation to New Orleans, that's okay. Norfolk has you covered. Bayou Boogaloo Festival started today. Located in Town Point Park, this music and Cajun food festival features all the best New Orleans has to offer, from alligator straight off the grill to authentic Louisiana art. Missed out today? Don't worry. My music, food, and fun for the whole family continues tomorrow from noon until 6 p.m. The rain today did not stop beer lovers from gathering at the third annual Chicks Beach Festival. The Beer Fest was sponsored by HK on the Bay in Virginia Beach. The event featured live music as well as vendors with art and clothing available for sale while local breweries offered beer samples. The Neon Festival 2016 wrapped up tonight in Norfolk's downtown Neon District. There was a local beer and wine with food trucks and live music. The Bush Comedy Theater had free comedy shows every 30 minutes for event goers. The four day festival is meant to encourage people in the community to walk around the district to get to know local businesses and feature the unveiling of massive artwork painted by local artists scaling across buildings. Still to come tonight, devastating floods wash away homes, memories, and livelihoods in West Virginia. We'll hear from survivors on how they're coming to terms with so much loss and destruction. God bless the United States of America and to all the dads out there, happy Father's Day, guys. Stay with us and we'll tell you why President Obama chose to spend his Father's Day out in the wilderness. The flames are fast moving in California's Kern County. After already claiming the lives of two people and destroying 100 structures, officials are saying this fire has become extremely dangerous. This fire kicked off just before 4 p.m. yesterday and it ravaged several communities. It burnt up and over uh, Lake Isabella to uh, Squirrel Valley and now here we're in South Lake. And if you look around, uh, this is one of the hardest hit communities. It's just this whole block and the surrounding blocks, there's there's devastation and these homes are burnt to the ground. Got the call from my girlfriend. She was scared, didn't know what to do. I told her to take her little dog and go. And left my two big dogs here in the yard. I hope they made it out. All these people have animals. They all have dogs. They all have kids. Wives. It's just all gone. While evacuations are still in effect in some areas, others are coming home to find nothing left. Officials are still unsure how the fire started. At least seven people have been stabbed outside the California State Capitol building in Sacramento. The brawl started today during a rally by what's being called a right wing extremist group. They were met by a large group of counter protesters, which led to fights.
As the morning went on, um, a number of scuffles broke out um, and uh, culminated with a number of assaults that took place on the Capitol grounds. None of those individuals um, who sustained injuries are believed to be um, in life-threatening condition. The group of protesters claims to be fighting racism and discrimination against immigrants. This Father's Day is certainly a day to celebrate and appreciate dad, but one son in Minnesota took that appreciation to another level, creating an app to help with his dad suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder after serving in Iraq. Patrick Sluzkak was deployed from 2006 to 2007 in Iraq with the U.S. Army. In the middle of the night, he would wake up from terrible nightmares, unable to fall back to sleep for hours. His son Tyler decided to do something about it. Does is the application is called My Bivy and it's worn on the wrist and also used on the phone. And with the two connected, the wristwatch uh, tracks your heart rates and your movements, and it looks for patterns. And when we find like X pattern, we can deem that as a night terror. And so when there's an onset of a night terror, and when the watch sees a certain pattern, it'll actually interrupt him by sending gentle buzzes to his wrist to take his subconscious off of the. Really? Troubling thought, yeah. This app was a, a godsend to me. Just having this thing on, I mean, I can, I can make it eight, nine hours, no problem, sleeping. Tyler is also working with the Department of Veterans Affairs to see how this app can help in the future. Today is Father's Day, and President Obama celebrated at Yosemite National Park by speaking about the importance of national parks. Uh, you know, it's been said, and it's absolutely true, that you know, this was maybe America's best idea. Yeah. The, the, the idea that these spaces are, are, are sacred, they are for everyone and mm. not just for the few, and that you preserve them for future generations. How's it going? Yeah. Are you guys having fun? Yeah. President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama met with a group of fourth graders during their trip to the National Park. With the assistance of a park ranger, the couple taught the children about basic forest survival, including how to scare away a bear. Obama came to Yosemite as his way of celebrating the 100th anniversary of the first national park in America. A heartwarming story now about a military homecoming. This story started a year ago when Chad and his military service dog, Freddie, were working together overseas. Chad was able to come home to America, but Freddie was still working for the military in Italy. Not often do these military dogs get to retire and come home to their handlers. But the goal of the American Humane Association is to have more of these reunions. I mean, they're their best friends. They're their lifeline. Um, they're just like a brother in arms. So um, to be able to bring them home and reunite with them is something that uh, you can't put a price on. Chad says he is happy to say Freddie now gets to live out the rest of his life with his own spot on the couch and a ton of toys. If you would like to learn how you can help to make more of these reunions possible, head over to the AmericanHumane.org. As the days are getting hotter, one way we can cool off is with some quality pool time. Here, one dog is getting a little exercise in the water. Cody, are you seriously standing right now? <laughs> This is Cody. He is a two-year-old Labrador who loves to go for swims in the pool at his home in Pennsylvania. But when he learned his hind legs could touch the bottom, he put his doggy paddling days behind him, and he now just enjoys taking a stroll through the water one leg at a time. Two Olympic champions were in town today in hopes of inspiring tomorrow's athletes. U.S. Olympians Josh Davis and Ariana Kukors teamed up with the Princess Anne YMCA to put on the Mutual of Omaha Breakout Swim Clinic. This gave area kids the opportunity to learn how to enhance their swimming skills with in-water demonstrations focused on swim strokes and techniques. The Mutual Walmart Breakout Swim Clinic, we help these kids break out to new levels of performance, not only in the pool, but in their life as well. And we really believe that when they listen and work really hard and have an attitude of gratitude, that is when they're thankful for what they've got and they show that in thankfulness and their intensity, the world is, is, is theirs and they can do anything they want. So hopefully they see us, that, it's, that we can do it, maybe they can do it too. After the event, some swimmers even got the chance to test their skills and race against Olympic champions. Would you take a ride on a slide 1,000 feet in the air? Well, now there's your chance with LA's new Sky Slide. Oh my gosh, I have been waiting and waiting for this. I was trying to like experience everything, look at the view, 
scream. It was too much, but it was great. Can't breathe. <laughs> I was gasping the whole time, but that was really fun. <laughs> that was amazing. 2,200 people brought out their inner child to ride this 45 foot long slide at the grand opening ceremony yesterday. If you are brave enough to try it, the 70 story glass slide offers breathtaking views along with the thrill of the ride. It is Shark Week in Hampton Roads. Stay with News 3 and we'll tell you what the Virginia Living Museum is doing to help you get a bite out of the action. Shark Week is in full swing around Hampton Roads all week long. Newport News is celebrating at the Virginia Living Museum. Booths have been set up to help kids of all ages learn about sharks, their habitats, and what's being done to protect them. There's also face painting and tons of hands-on activities, including a chance to pet a real shark. Want to see more pictures and videos from today's Shark Week festivities? Head on over to WTKR.com and find the link on our homepage. Bringing your pets to the vet can be a pain, but what if you had to bring 22 of them all at once? Jim Hirschberger designed a house in the back of his truck to drive around all 22 of his cats. When he brought them in for rabies shots, it created quite the spectacle. Lauren Maxwell has the story. Come on, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Still to come tonight, don't mess with this vigilante from the Wild West. Stick with News 3 to see how the neighborhood friendly cowboy stops a robbery. Hurricane Hermine could not scare away runners for this year's Rock and Roll Half Marathon and 5K in Virginia Beach. The Rock and Roll Marathon series is unique because along the race course, bands are playing every other mile with a music festival at the finish line for the race after party. While sponsors weren't expecting a huge turnout today because of the storm, thousands of people still showed up for today's race, including some of our weekend team. The race started at 7 a.m. and it turned out to be a beautiful day for the race. Your neighborhood friendly vigilante stops a robbery in Oregon on horseback. Witnesses say the man was stealing a bike from a lady in the Walmart parking lot. That's when Robert Borba says he heard the lady scream and his instincts took over. Borba grabbed his horse out of his trailer, hopped on and lassoed the suspect. Uh, I, thought it were, I thought they were playing because it was funny, but I figured out that they were not playing until I see the guy screaming for help. <laughs> the cowboy says after he realized what he did, he was afraid he would be the one getting into trouble and going to jail. But when authorities arrived, they arrested the suspect, Victoriano Sanchez, and Robert Borba was allowed to go on his way. Thanks so much for joining us tonight for News 3 at 6. Our next newscast is at 10 p.m. on WGNT. And don't forget, we're here 24 hours a day on WTKR.com. Have a great night.